Hello, everybody. Hello, brothers and sisters of Christ. Hallelujah, Jesus. Uh, so thankful to be a child of God. Lord, forgive us for all of our sins. Um, and anybody hearing my voice right now, the Lord loves you. and uh, Just repent of all your sins. Give it to Him. He's faithful. Um, he's rich in mercy. And he loves you. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So I just woke up from a dream. It's probably like 3 in the morning, 2 in the morning. Uh, babe, what time is it? Mm, almost 5. It's almost 5 in the morning. I had a very long dream. I got my whole, all night I was wrestling in the spirit, in my dream. So I, I all night, it was like the devil was trying to like, it started out, I was like, God was showing me like there's like still something in me, like still something in me that like was seeking something. Um, not that I was really reaching, but sometimes it's deep down and God just revealed something in me. But I guess I'm somewhere deep in my soul, mind, conscious, my being, somewhere, wherever. God was showing me that I wanted to still make it. I wanted to be something, you know. I wanted to be something, but not in the right way. Um, and, and, and the Bible says, in the end times, people dream dreams and old men will have visions. Paraphrasing, forgive me, it's not exactly what the word says. Someone put it in the description. Somebody put it down there for people. I'm sure I'll end up doing something with it and make this deep. So I was like seeking the answer on how these people get famous and how they make their songs. And um, how just how it works, you know? And uh, so the whole first part of the dream, it was like I was going to different countries, you know? It wasn't even just like Hollywood or LA. It was like I was going to different places trying to find the answers. Finally, um, Post Malone shows up, and um, he has face tattoos and stuff, and I never got face tattoos for him. When I was getting face tattoos, I was like, oh, I want to be like these rappers, all these rappers that have face tattoos. I was very um, impressionable, young man, very impressionable, you know, I, I thought, I, that's it, face tattoos, I'll be famous. But, um, but anyways, Post Malone showed up in my dream. And like, he was just like saying like, Bugatti, and like his words just put, didn't sound good in my dream. And um, then he like, I'm in like a dark room, a dark, huge, like kind of like a castle looking place, like something scary. And he shows up in his car and that's like, like has like, blue light coming from the car, like lightning, you know, it's scary because that represents the devil in a lot of ways, and I look over and I woke up from that part of the, like, the dream was like going, every time I'd go to sleep, I'd be back right where I was, like, I didn't, I couldn't escape this dream, I feel like God really put it on me to have to experience this to show me something, and I'll get, by the end of this dream, you'll understand how powerful God is, so I saw that and I was like, woke up. I kept trying to, like, wake myself up. It was, like, so... I don't know why I was so fearful, but it was, like, scary just to be around the dude. You know, so I don't think people understand who these people are. And, like, maybe I don't fully understand who they are because, you know, it's easy to say things like, oh, these people sold their souls or they're wicked. Like, but I, this dream, I felt so much fear about this person. Like, Post Malone, like, the fear I felt on him, it's like, he had to have given, do, do something. So then I end up in, like, other countries, and I'm, like, teleporting. So it's like, it's like, I can't, I don't know why this is, but for some reason I was, like, teleporting. It's like, India, and all these places. 
So maybe they astral project. Maybe these people astral project. Maybe they, maybe they go through portals or something. I don't, I don't know that part of the dream. God knows, and the people who are hearing this right now, you, you know what this means. This probably means something to you in your walk. So then I go to some like Yellow Springs type place. Yellow Springs is in Ohio. I'm not saying it was Yellow Springs, but it was like that. But I think Yellow Springs even came up in this whole thing. This is why it was like kind of weird for me. That could also be my own human conscience trying to put ABC together in the dream. And at this place I was at, for some reason it was like somebody knew I was seeking this. It's this fame, this fortune, this seeking some... It's like, I'm gonna get, I just got goosebumps, ooh, I feel it. It's like somebody knew I was seeking this thing. And I said a name, and I won't say the name, because I don't think I'm supposed to. I'm even getting more goosebumps. And like from the tip of my head all the way to my body right now, it's just like, definitely got God bumps. But, um, and then this guy says, you're seeking this person. And he said a name. And once again, I won't say the name because I I wouldn't doubt if that name is a very powerful name in the devil's camp that has something to do with this. But why the guy approached me, I wasn't seeking him, that he knew. This is why I think this is God. This is why I, I, I know it's God telling me something very, very powerful in the spiritual realm. But it's like this guy sought me out. He sought me. I didn't. I didn't go around asking people about it. But earlier in the dream, somebody I knew sold their soul. They were part of this, and I got like a little jealous because I'm like, oh, they made it. And I was like, how do I make it? Let me show you some of my my old music I used to make. And I think it was God from me. Like you gotta let go of whatever thing you think you had. And this is for anybody listening right now. This is very important. None of it matters. And this is where it gets really spooky. This is where you'll realize that God, Jesus is Christ. Jesus Christ is King. He's Lord of Lords, King of Kings. And uh, he's coming back. He's coming back. He's, he's coming back. Jesus is going to come back. And he's going to show it. He's going to show everybody who he is. And um, this guy, the same guy. Oh, I can feel it. I can feel it. My body keeps getting useless every time I talk about this guy. This is how I know this. God's showing me something. Showing us all something right now. If you can hear my voice, Jesus Christ loves you. And he's calling you home. He's saying, come to me. I'm coming quickly. Behold, I'm coming quickly. And uh, the same guy approaches me. And he hands me an envelope. It has an address on it and everything. And it's for me. I'm getting, my body gets shivers. It's for me. How you got a piece of mail? Th it's like thick, you know, and all this stuff. And it's like, oh, I can feel it from here and back of my. I'm getting goosebumps all the way on my back. And he handed it to me. And then it was like in a split of an instant, I was telling God, "Hey, I'll do this. I'll, you know, I, I think I was like saying something like, basically, I'll be part of this, and then I'll expose them." You know, just can that be our agreement? And I think God showed me there is no, you can't do that. There's no, you can't break that. Once you're in that, you're in that. And I'll, and I'll go further in the dream and how, how it works. And um, I, I believe wholeheartedly that God was showing me how it all works and that don't sell your soul. Because I don't, I think you can. I believe you can definitely lose it, salvation. And I think the only way you can lose salvation is, you know, the unforgivable sin is blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Well, maybe that's what they make you do when you sell your soul. Maybe that's what it means. Maybe they, they figured out a way to blaspheme the Holy Spirit and have these rich, famous artists do that. I don't know, but that's my, that's my, my uh, discernment and spirit. So he gives me this envelope, and I like, I can, it just like, I, I felt dirty, and I was just holding the envelope with this, whatever's in it. It's probably a contract for whatever I, it is that I've 
deep down inside of me. And I believe in Jesus Christ. I love Jesus. I, every day I try to be a better me, and it's a spiritual war every day for me. I'm not perfect, but I love God. I love God for all that I am. Because when I was in a dark room and nobody was there, I cried out to him, and I said, God, I give you my free will. But if you don't come in my life and take over, I'm going to die. I knew that. And that's how I know Jesus loves me. He loves you too. And uh, oh, it's just so, it's so wild. I feel this. Like this dream is real. This is for everybody who's seeking something outside of Jesus. You don't need it. Just seek him. He'll give you everything. This world's a lie anyway. Jesus is king. And he's coming back. So I have this envelope addressed to me. It has an address on it. I remember the address kind of. I remember one word. But I'm not going to say that either. Because that's another thing that I'm not going to do. I don't want to say that because I feel like I really believe it was like this was a very real spiritual dream. Might have even been the devil trying to intervene in my life. And God's like, I'm not going to let this happen. But I'll show you what's going on. And I'll show you what you've been seeking and why you don't want it. So I start walking with the letter. And then basically the guy says, like, you have to convince people. Or like one of the another person, another person in like this society was like, you have to convince people God isn't real. Everywhere you go, you have to convince God isn't real. You have to tell, oh, I feel it in my whole body. I feel goosebumps just went down my spine, my ears, my, I can feel it in my head. This is how I know God's revealing truth. He said, you got to convince people God's not real. And I kept seeing different visions of people sitting down at ice cream shops, drinking beer, and saying things like, oh, God's not real, God's not real, and saying this stuff. You tell me this isn't what they do because this is what they do. I've never felt so much truth and so, I've never been so convinced in my life that Jesus Christ is Lord until this dream. And I mean, I believed in him, but this is like, whoa. I took this envelope. I didn't open it. I didn't be a part of it. I just opened it. I took, they gave me the invitation and I believe it was a devil. And the guy that gave it to me too, he just had this smile. It was normal human, but it's like, I just felt evil. I just felt like the devil hollow. And all, I kept seeing these scenes of all these people sitting down with beers like, if you believe that? And I, I didn't necessarily hear every conversation, but I knew what I was observing was you see everybody around that's convincing people Jesus isn't real. And I was people walking down the street, people at, you know, fairs. All, it was like so quick, but it was like I was observing this. People like that's what the devil wants. He has people everywhere. Saying, Jesus is not real. Jesus is not real because you tell a lie long enough, people believe it. This is something that all crazy rulers have done. This is propaganda in the world. This is what it does. And the devil starts it all. It's division. So he hands me this envelope. And as I'm walking down the street, I just felt like dirty. And I was with my wife. And my wife's my, God's my rock. But God give me, a, excuse me. An awesome wife, a loving wife, a wife that stands by my side through it all. And she was like mad that I even had the envelope, you know, because then it's like, it, I think it just meant like she knew like that's not the way. And then it's like, as we started walking, like I just felt like dirty. I started like looking at everybody and there was no meaning. And then this palm tree like got split in half and everything started trying to kill me. You know, like everything started trying to kill me. I don't think it was God trying to kill me. I think that the enemy knew. I think the devil knew I wasn't accepting his offer. But everything kept missing me. Everything kept missing me. And then it's like, oh, I feel goosebumps all the way from my head, all the way down through my body. I've never felt goosebumps like that in my life. And I threw the letter. And I just kept saying, hallelujah. Jesus is king. Jesus is Lord. God, hallelujah. And I woke up. And I'm making this video because God showed me something. It's not what you think it is. The devil knows you're seeking him. I feel goosebumps in my skull through my body right now. I know this is truth. I know the Lord has woke me up to something. You can't fake this. You can't you can't make this stuff up. I never I never believed in how you don't want the devil what the devil's got for you. He will have you do something. And I believe it's blasphemy in the Holy Spirit. I believe this is wisdom for Christians. I, don't, I I shouldn't say Christians. I think it's just servants of Christ. If you follow Christ, if you follow Jesus Christ, this is for you. Wake people up. Tell people this, you know. Because it's like, you know, my whole life, that's what I wanted. I wanted to be a famous artist. 
I wanted the money because I didn't want to be poor. I wanted to be able to change my life. But I'd rather be a, a bum and have Jesus. I'd rather work a job cleaning toilets and, and know Jesus and have him in my heart and in my life. All that stuff doesn't matter. Because the second I started saying, I heard this like scary music, like the world was ending, like people chanting and like terrible music. And then I just kept saying hallelujah. And it's like I felt nothing could touch me. And I woke up. So if you don't know Jesus today, if you don't know Jesus Christ, I'm not ashamed. The world is just duped by the devil's lies. And God revealed that to me in my dream. So I pray, Father, I ask right now in Jesus' name. That everybody hearing my voice be saved by your grace, by your mercy, and by your love. And I pray that you just wreck them in the spirit and show them what truth is. And guide them and let them know your voice. And any pain, fear, anything that devil tries to throw their way, I pray that you slay it so hard. Throw it to the ground. Because that's what you're good at doing, protecting your children. And have them repent of their sins and let them know you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I love you. Jesus loves you. He is king. He's Lord of lords. And just know he's coming back. And Revelation says, behold, I am coming quickly. We don't understand God's timing, but he's coming like a thief in the night. And he loves you guys. All you women, he loves you. If you've been broken, beaten down, and you think you're not worth it. You are worth it. All you men who've been broken down, beaten, he loves you. Don't sell your soul out here for nothing. Follow him. He loves you so much. This body's going to die. You don't want You don't want to die in eternity. You don't want to be damned to hell. This isn't a fear tactic. This is me saying, like, I think hell is, God's not warning us because he wants to hurt us. He's saying, your actions take you to hell, not me. He loves you. He's showing you. He's giving us the directions in the Bible. He gives us the directions on where to go. If you don't have a Bible, I highly recommend you get your, get yourself a King James Version Bible and really just start reading the Word. If it doesn't make sense, just say, God, please let this make sense to me. And if you go to Him humbly, He will He will lift you up. He will lift you up higher than you ever thought you could be lifted up. It doesn't matter if you're on the streets, homeless, on drugs, anything. Right now, if you give your life to Christ, He's faithful. He's so faithful. I love you. And I pray the peace of God come over you, your family, and your life. And that God's God's grace goes everywhere you go. In Jesus' name, amen.